Start Eventually, we'll be working on uh, 3D print enclosures. Oh, Laura's actually got all made out on the ground over there, so <laughs> getting close to the end of the semester, so we've got to get those built. What's going on over here? So these are basically like the kits for the enclosure? Yeah. We're separating them all out. Oh, so no. they're like a thousand parts. <laughs> we got a roll cage on this uh, Jeep Renegade. <laughs> this TL file I downloaded. And it has like the right dimensions on the body. So. Is that for your car? Yeah, it's for my car. It's also for like just for practice. I'm gonna uh, make the roll cage around it. I'm using I'm doing pinpoint so on, on the body instead of using planes and stuff, I'm doing a, a 3D sketch. So with the 3D sketch you use your pinpoint so you you're gonna point it's kinda of slower. To the pinpoint, so I pinpoint it right here where I want it. And I'll pinpoint it right here. And then I pinpoint it another one. Right here. And then after that, <clears throat> I mirrored it over to the other side using this plane right here. And then after that, I, I added my lines and it gives you that dimension that you're looking for. And it follows the inside of the body of the car. And then now you get, um, <clears throat> after I'm done with all this, I'm going to. I'm going to bring in an LS1, and I'm going to see how much space I have in the engine bay. And then most likely I'll mount the radiator in the trunk area, everything in the back. So it would just be the engine in the front. Wow. Yeah, you won't have space for a radiator mounted in the front. How's the air going to get to the radiator? I'll do some scoops right here, bro. Look. All right, all right. Look, do some air vents to this little window right here. It's going to come off. <laughs> and then on top right here, bro, it's going to be a roof scoop. Next. It's going to go... <laughs> Uh, it's gonna have tunnels coming down to the radiator, bro. It's gonna be fucking sick. This is the barbecue, and hoping to maybe laser cut some gears uh, with a chain that's gonna attach to this floating barbecue that isn't coming up right now. But uh, that's basically the frame that I just have to adjust and be able to fit in there. But I have like a little crank handle and a stop to like raise and lower the grill. Um, but I'm hoping to be able to crank this out like oh, pretty quickly. Dude, that just scared me. Oh, yeah. uh, not here. I'll, I'll make it. Uh, make it in my garage. Got a little welder and maybe send some parts out to get laser cut or whatever I gotta do. I want to do like different styles of it too. Like maybe some that like don't have the the gear in the chain and it's just like uh, maybe like more of like a wood border around it. Um, I don't know. But uh, I want to make like a bunch of different kinds. Is Indies your brand? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's something uh, my dog's name. So it's just, uh, yeah. It's cute. Where does the, the skateboard come from? Uh, right now I'm doing a uh, 3D printing ramps for a skateboard, like little tech deck obstacles for kids. So uh, I just thought of a company I could create a bunch of obstacles real quick. So it's easy to come up with a bunch of ramps and stuff. So yeah, I just actually uh, sold some stuff today. It's on, uh, Oh, so you're selling them? Yeah. Oh. So I started this since being in the class. <laughs> and then I just, the hardest part is getting the content done and like learning how to make the sales online through e-commerce and like showing people there's stuff here to buy. And is this like a plan you had before you even took the course or is this something that just happened? No, uh, we get a printer with the course and I figured out, I uh, was trying to think of a way to make some money with it. Is this one yours? Yeah, this is mine right here. I just finished riveting it. Nice, so what's, what's left? Or is it done? Hey, follow my OnlyFans, feedpicks.com. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's up? Is this uh, is it done or you have anything left to do? It's done. I just gotta do print my um my my door panel little hinges right here. So one right here, one right here. Put those on and the other door. Then after that, um we do the the window or whatever. The window here. And we'll be good at print. It's a spherical bearing adapter, so it's 
from a revolution to a metal spherical gun. And there's a couple that are on the market, but I wasn't sure about how much misalignment angle they had because it's directly linked to the suspension travels. Making my own and Vices. To make vices? Mm -hmm. so there's all the raw material there. No, that, that, that stack, stack over there. Stack over there. So we're sending a machine to do the, the actual jaw that grabs the parts right now with the vices out of the stock. So we'll be running all of these first. All the first stop, then we'll switch up our setup and do the second op, and then we'll move on to the next part. Center section is going to be gone. It gets milled pretty much down across it all the way through. So. This is the base of the vise, and then uh, I'll load that up in and cut it all out and then go from there, assemble it, get everything in the vise. So that's where we're going to take our edge finder and look, touch off on the back of the part, mm. move in half the distance of the edge finder and half the distance of our part. Okay. That's going to be our Y0, and we'll do the same thing with X. So, so that'll, that'll make our work offset zero in the middle, and then we'll type over that little bit of code we typed in that one time, and it moves the tool right to the middle part. We'll double yeah. check ourselves that way. Well, uh, these guys are continuing on their 3D print projects, so they're printing a two piece wheel, um, wheel shell, face, two pieces they can glue together if they want. Basically, teaches them how to. Um, design around 3D printing and uh, certain features that would only be doable with a 3D printer. Uh, helps them think kind of out of the box in the typical, uh, from typical modeling and machining manufacturing techniques. No, why not? What is Tinkerbell? Why are you printing Tinkerbell? Uh, I'm, act I'm making a little um, a little present for my mom. It's actually this little lantern here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm just making her a little stuff. I just sized it up a little bit. This is an example we're learning how to do sheet metal. Um, in Saul Rooks, we learn how to take a flat piece and then um, using it to bend. Um, we're also revisiting how to use weld guns, which is basically turning the sketch into like kind of a ready-made part, similar to how it would be um, like made in in the class. So this is actually the welding table that the FOF class makes as one of their first projects. So we're kind of getting to see. I've, I did the FWF class as well as a couple others, so it's nice to see like the design behind what we ended up making. I think it's nice having done fabrication first, because I kind of know a, a, a number of the projects we've now done like the design work for, but it's nice to be able to know how they get made in the real world, as opposed to just, you can, you can draw whatever you want on here. Um, but you can't always make it in the real world, so it's nice to have that little bit of background coming into this class. You <laughs> just popped your head off like a I've recalculated the pressure. Is that a Batmobile? It is a 1 6 scale Batmobile. It's going to be about 40 inches in length. 40 inches? 40 inches in length. 1 6 scale. Tables, brother. Uh, one of these tables actually right here. 
pretty good tables. Yeah. One eighth inch top, backslash one eighth. Uh, 90 thou, uh, one inch and a half square tubing. Uh, pretty nice. Right now they're, they're welding all the, the fillet welds, which is the 90s. Um, after that, they're just gonna get graded and uh, hopefully everything comes out good. The square and all nice and deburred and whatnot. Take a while to go on, man. Alright, bro. Not bad. <laughs> Sound like you've been defeated. <laughs> uh, not yet. Not yet. The piece of one for second day. Second day ever on the machine, so. Which have you enjoyed more, TIG or MIG? TIG, definitely. Yeah, TIG for sure. How's it going so far, man? Uh, not bad. Uh, I've had a couple of good ones, but... Just a little more material, and uh, I'll have it down here shortly. What's the key to doing TIG? Uh, patience, always patience, and then um, steady hand and, and pace. If you can get a good pace going, then um, it'll come out nice and clean. Getting there, getting better. Probably the best one yet. Pretty happy with that one. <laughs> Continuous demo, 100 amps. I'm gonna work with his settings just to show him. So he's getting a little hot and a little dull. So I just gotta give him a little uh, better understanding on how to control your heat. All right, here we go. You see my hand speed was a little bit faster, and you gotta just dip a little bit faster and a little bit more. Now, was there a torch hand? Are you moving the torch? No, just steady, one steady, steady, steady. So, think of it as the more rod I can add to my weld, the more I can displace the heat. Okay. All right. So, if I can add more rod, I can keep my weld a little cooler. What's going on here? Low and home. Making aluminum Swiss cheese. <laughs> what is this uh, lump we got going? Uh, well, there was a huge hole. And then uh, all of that is about probably about 10, 10 of these rods that it took to fill that hole. So, yeah, fun time. So you just gotta grind that down and then it'll all look smooth and... Uh, yeah, so because of filling it and not that great, I do have some low spots. So I gotta go back and fill up those low spots to make it at least above the, a little bit and then I'll go back and grind it all down and make it nice and smooth again. Yep, finishing up polishing and then we'll be grading it at the end of the day. Nice, and then you get graded? Yep, uh, once we're all finished up with it, so polishing is the last step, and then we'll go take it in and get graded. Okay. What do you think yeah. you're going to get on it? Uh, I got a few blemishes, like flat spots and a few other spots just from the welding or the metal warping, so I'm thinking like a 95, hopefully. Oh, uh, it's nice to think we're going to start uh, doing some machining, so we'll move out of this room over to the machine room. Right here. All right, let's go. Grade yourself. What do you think you're getting? Oh, jeez. A B. A B. Yeah. Why? No, because I took too much time to try and shine it right here. But I should have waited to like buff it and uh, smooth it out till after I was done with this stuff. But I'll still do it. But it'll just take a little bit more time. Eighty times two, which is what? What are we working on this week? Um, tap project. Uh, this morning we started off with sus uh, suspension. And then in the afternoons we'll uh, continue on drawing some chipboard. And it's just an exercise of drawing chipboard and being able to cut it back out on the, 
on some sheet metal and then uh, getting graded on that. So kind of fine tune their, their skills, their drafting skills and some more bandsaw skills. Who's making tabs? Making tabs, reading and engineering drawing, yeah. finding out what the dimensions are from what's given to us on set engineering drawing and then translating that into chipboard and then you're going to make a template and then trace that out on some metal and you're going to cut it out and then the test is seeing how that piece fits into uh, a buck or a jig and that's how we test out if it has to fit perfectly into the pattern that the teacher gives us in a situation where you don't have a computer or you know CNC capabilities. This gives students the ability to basically read an engineering drawing and then make a part from it from scratch using these old school methods. Fit in here. That's the hard part of this project. It definitely uh, takes takes a good amount of time, um, but basically helps me pack up with um, my casting chip skills. How's it going? Not much. Jay chilling, laying up. It's another day. Probably gonna run out of resin here. We did our sandwich panel already, so then. We cut it, and now we're repairing it, kind of. And then we're gonna break that one or something again. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. Hi, uh, this message is for Troy. Um, can, <laughs> can you we please, put a heater in here? Yeah, can you please get a heater in here, please? Thank you. It's just uh, you know, 48 degrees in here at two in the afternoon. All right, who's better at laying up? Who's done? Sometimes quality takes time. He said who's better, not faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's right. why I'm done first, because I have more experience. Sure he does. Sure he does. Hey Dustin, does who's a better have, who's a better have student? An award for this class? Who's a better student? Dustin's like no comment. I am. Always learning. Ah, I see what you did. Dustin's there. got uh, some funny shit to say. <laughs> Like I hate all of them. <laughs> yeah, he's like Adam's the worst. He annoys me the fucking most. <laughs> weight you think this could withstand? Weight? Yeah. Standing on top of it? Close to a thousand pounds probably. <laughs> so you think it could hold me? Oh yeah, definitely. Like if I supported both ends and stood in the middle. <laughs> and can I make another one of the breaks? Alright. Start off with my feet on the edges and work in. That's 220 pounds. About a quarter of the weight. Are you impressed? 